This week on Jerusalem Dateline, for the first time in nearly 60 years, biblical scroll fragments found in the Judean desert are revealed. And Israeli elections, 39 parties to choose from, and the main question for many Israelis, are you for Benjamin Netanyahu or against him? Plus, redemption from the rubble in Beirut. All this and more this week on Jerusalem Dateline. Hello and welcome to this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. I'm Chris Mitchell. The Israel Antiquities Authority revealed new treasures and fragments from 2,000-year-old biblical texts. They are some of the biggest discoveries since the Dead Sea Scrolls were found in 1948. And some of the finds go back more than 10,000 years. Since 2017, Israeli archaeologists have surveyed the ravines and caves of the Judean desert. The Israel Antiquities Authority put together the four-year project to prevent robbers from looting priceless artifacts. Work included rappelling more than 200 feet down to one of the main caves. Inside, the team dug and sifted soil not touched for nearly two millennia. Their work uncovered biblical treasures, including pieces of scrolls nearly 2,000 years old. Wow. wow! Then they made the precarious trek up the cliffs, taking the treasures to the Israel Museum. It's a great day. Actually, it's a, it's a day where we, we can show our, uh, our work in the last four years in the desert. It's specific work, but you can see that we found many significant artifacts and items that belong to the state uh, of Israel. Perhaps the most important finds are these scrolls from the book of Zechariah and Nahum. These are the first biblical scrolls found in the Judean desert in nearly 60 years. The Jews who fled the Romans in 70 AD brought this scroll to the cave. They took with them only what was most important to them and what was essential for surviving, and this is one of the things that they took. And this tells us something about how strong their belief was. Um, and one could always assume that they read the words of the prophets here and found some sort of a consolation during their troubled times. The recovered portion of the scroll comes from the book of Zechariah that says, these are the things you are to do. Speak the truth to one another, render true and perfect justice in your gates, and do not contrive evil against one another, and do not love perjury, because all those are things that I hate declares the Lord. It was also very striking to find these specific verses. I read it a bit as a kind of a message that is, uh, transcends time. The team also uncovered the 6,000-year-old body of a child and found an intact basket that they sent for carbon dating. When the result came back, we were amazed. It is 10,500 years old. It's so unique. It's the only example that looks like this from that time in Israel and maybe in the world. The find shed light on Jewish history. These coins from the Bar Kokhba revolt against the Romans carry inscriptions that refer to the times of King David and King Solomon. These coins are from the time of Jerusalem's destruction in 70 AD. It's the Jewish people's story. Wow. The scrolls that, that we found, the fugitives, the coins, the weapons, from the rebellions, but it's not only the story of the Jewish people, the story of the humankind. Back in the Judean desert, archaeologists say there are still hundreds of caves left to explore, with the promise of finding more biblical scrolls and historic artifacts. Israelis are heading to the polls soon for their fourth election in less than two years. Dozens of political parties are vying for government control, and as election day gets closer, the picture is anything but clear. In the latest surveys, the top contenders are Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud party and Yair Lapid's Yeshatid. You have to put someone in charge to revive the Israeli economy. Who are you going to do it? Somebody who's already done it successfully and brought Israel's economy to the best possible results in our history, the best results in our history, was someone like Yair Lapid. I think it's time for a generational change shift in Israel. I think, um, as I was saying, I'm ready, the party's ready. We have, we have the right plans, we have the right abilities, we have the right experience by now. For this voting population that's weary of lockdowns, a battered economy, and too many elections, result projections are unclear. According to this poll from Israeli public broadcaster Khan, Likud remains in the lead with 30 seats. 
Yeshatid is next with 21, followed by Yamina with 12, and New Hope 11. Seven more parties would likely enter the Knesset with fewer seats, including Defense Minister Benny Gantz's Blue and White Party. Others won't make the threshold. Whether any of the top contenders can form a coalition is the question. For the first time, it's uh, not two rivals that are fighting head to head or neck to neck, as we had even in previous elections with Benny Gantz and Netanyahu. Here, it's uh, some kind of uh, quadruple elections and no one can really forecast what will be the outcome. In Israel's parliamentary system, citizens vote for a party, not the prime minister. There are 120 seats in the Knesset, and the leader whose party wins the most seats, or who is most likely to succeed, gets the job of building a coalition. Former Netanyahu advisor Aviv Bushinsky says there are really only two camps. We can define these elections that it's a yes Bibi or no Bibi. Yes for Netanyahu or no for Netanyahu. And in a way, it's not exactly what he did or did not do. Many praise Netanyahu for the mass vaccination campaign and the Abraham Accords peace agreements. And while some 70 percent of the Knesset is right wing, many on the right oppose him. Great number of people who despise Netanyahu, don't like Netanyahu for other reasons, because Netanyahu is here for many, many years, some say too many years, and uh, without even uh, mentioning the fact that he is being tried for uh, corruption. At Jerusalem's open air market, the division was clear. I'm a Likud man. I've known Bibi since he was the United Nations ambassador when I was living in New York, and uh, I remain Likud. The religious are really ruined by this subject. Until now, I always chose Bibi, all the years, simply. This time, I definitely won't vote for him. We have a great prime minister. I believe it's time to change. Uh, it's, this country needs a change. According to Bushinsky, more than 40% of those who intend to vote are undecided. When the ideology is not the main issue, then uh, people are confused. So after reading a lot of agendas and a lot of ideologies, I've settled on the Yair Lapid, the Yesh Atid party. And I mean, I'm not certain that that's exactly what I support, but I think that right now that's the best option. I really hope that stuff will change after this election, although I have to say that this time I'm going to vote and I have no clue who I'm going to vote to. And if all else fails, Israelis could find themselves heading to a fifth election this year or next. Up next, redemption out of the rubble in Beirut after the city was devastated last year. His story has inspired the world for thousands of years. Israel's most famous king. Well, some scholars doubted his very existence. You cannot claim that King David is a mythological figure. Journey deep beneath the ancient city of Jerusalem and see proof of Israel's celebrated hero. Get written in stone, House of David. Join host Gordon Robertson on an expedition through the evidence supporting the Old Testament. Extraordinary discoveries made headlines around the world. See where the shepherd boy slew the mighty giant. We are sharing some light on the story of David and Goliath. Explore the relics of the Davidic age. There was a significant structure standing here. And discover proof of King David's legacy. This is a royal house. Written in stone, House of David can be yours for any dollar amount. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com. Available now. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. This Easter, spend time reflecting on Jesus' final week. In CBN's free devotional, The Hope for Redemption, you'll follow his path to Jerusalem, observe his last Passover meal, gain insight to his agony at Gethsemane, witness his crucifixion, and encounter the empty tomb. This Easter, realize afresh that he is risen. Get your free copy today. 
Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash Easter Devotion. It was one of the most horrific events in Lebanon's history. Last summer, a huge explosion at Beirut City Port turned much of downtown to rubble and left more than 200 people dead and thousands injured. That day, a local pastor heeded the voice of the Holy Spirit and it saved many lives. Wendy Griffith has the amazing story and how an interview with CBN helped them get back on their feet. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. Pastor Saeed Deeb of Beirut's Life Center Church told us how a strange feeling came over him the day of the explosion. I don't know what happened to my heart and I was feeling uh, not, not at ease and I don't know what to explain it. I felt something is going to happen, uh, something bad is going to happen. That uneasiness led Pastor Deeb to send his 34-person staff home and cancel Bible classes for more than 200 children. As if the Holy Spirit say, go, 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 go. So I was saying, everybody, go, go, go home, go home, go home, pushing them, turn off the computers, forcing them to leave. I was forcing them. And they said, we are cooking. We need to, to distribute food for refugees and for the poor. I said, today, cancel everything, put it in the fridge. So they, they were thinking, I lost my mind. But they didn't know, and I didn't know, this is the Holy Spirit prompting. Then... Shortly after 6 p.m. on August 4th, the unthinkable happened. Oh, boy. Without warning, a large amount of ammonia nitrate stored at the Beirut port exploded, possibly ignited by a warehouse fire. The shockwaves damaged buildings, roads, and shattered glass for miles in the densely populated city. When it was over, more than 200 people were dead, upwards of 7,000 injured and 300,000 homeless. And I thought this is the end, this is the end, but the Lord has another plan. Located only a mile from the epicenter, Pastor Deeb's 4,000 square meter life center church saw great damage. Now everything I built in 12 years, I saw it destroyed on the floor. All the ceilings on the floor, all the lamps, all the paintings, all, all the doors. Doors without frames, windows, and you know, all it's glass, all of it in glass and aluminum, it's horrible. And I was really crying and crying. It also led to desperation for the people of Beirut as they lacked the basic necessities of food, shelter, and water. Although facing great need, Life Center Church reached out to help as many victims as possible. Pastor Deeb says that's when another miracle took place. He told CBN News his story of heeding the Holy Spirit and sending everyone home. That interview was seen around the world and relief started pouring in. Uh, praise God, we've been able to uh, raise the center back to its normal center and even better. We, we debt free. We don't have any debts anymore and uh, extra funds we get, we were able to help 800 families eat those affected families every month with food parcels. So since day one, we were giving food away with the little money we had and the Lord kept sending, sending, sending. But Deep says the overall situation in Beirut remains desperate. Much of the city lies in rubble, leaving many without hope. Everybody wants to, to flee the country. They're trying to go in boats and, and they're dying in boats actually every day. But please pray for us to give hope to all those around us, to strengthen them, especially the leaders. Deep says despite the horror of that deadly explosion, God is bringing something good from the ashes. I'm seeing people coming to Jesus like never before, never. When you speak to and, and a big number of priests coming to faith, big number of priests coming uh, to the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the signs and wonders following them. So... I think it's, it's the time for Lebanon. Deep says he's grateful people around the world saw his story and helped in their time of need. Thank you so much, uh, especially for you and for CBN and for all those who are watching us. People from all around the world, from all around the world, start sending small amounts, big amounts, and praise God for the church. The first time I see the body of Christ in action to help uh, the churches here and to help the people who have been affected by the blast. He feels God is not done with Lebanon. So many promises in the Bible, and suddenly Lebanon will be transformed 
into a fertile field. And everybody will be my disciples, says the Lord, in Lebanon. Can you imagine? Wendy Griffith, CBN News. Coming up, a look at one of the wonders of the world, the Dead Sea, and why some are warning it's in danger. It was not my grace, but God, that I might come to the Irish nations to preach the gospel. Now available from CBN Films, I am Patrick. Get your DVD for a gift of $15 or more. What brings you back, Roman? People thought that this mission was crazy, that his efforts to Christianize Ireland were doomed to failure. From slave to missionary. Who among you heeds the call? Why would this man put himself in danger among enemies who do not know God? From sinner to saint. Patrick's story began a chain of events that is quite remarkable in the impact that it had. I am Patrick. Those are the words that begin the history of Ireland. I am Patrick. Get your DVD of this inspiring documentary today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com. Easter from Superbook. It's a challenge to talk about Jesus to people you don't know. Chris and Joy discover there are those who need to see to believe. I want to tell you about Jesus. <laughs> Forget it. I'm not going to waste my time on people who don't want to listen. Superbook. Join the Superbook Club and get Superbook's newest episode, Doubting Thomas. And as a bonus, receive the Superbook Easter double feature, which includes The Last Supper and He is Risen as our way of saying thanks. Earlier, we brought you a story on the amazing discoveries of the Dead Sea Scrolls for the first time in nearly six decades. Here's a story about the Dead Sea itself we did from a few years back that shows the Dead Sea is a natural wonder that is actually giving life. But this unique jewel is also in danger of drying up. Sunrise over the Dead Sea, a soothing atmosphere, biblical landmark, and mineral treasure. It sits on the Great Rift Valley between Israel and Jordan. Fed by fresh water from the Jordan River and mineral springs, it's one of the saltiest lakes in the world. So salty, no fish can survive in it. Nominated as one of the seven wonders of the world, the water, mud, and atmosphere have healing properties. But all this could disappear. The Dead Sea is dropping at a rate of five to eight feet a year. This blue chair marks where the shoreline was just four years ago. That means the lowest point on Earth is getting even lower. The reason is very, very simple. On one hand, there is all the time evaporation of water from and the surface is very large. On the other hand, good water from the upper Jordan were taken for irrigation to develop agriculture, to develop food uh, for the people, and they stopped reaching the, the Dead Sea. So the balance has changed. Hebrew University professor Avner Adin says there's only one way to restore the sea. What could say the Dead Sea is actually pouring water into the Dead Sea. A dean told CBN News a combination of solutions is the only way to help. One way which is the natural one, meaning let the rivers flow into it. Don't take the water from the Jordan, from the other rivers. Let it come back to its natural uh, way. The other way is artificial, meaning making the Red to Dead Sea project um, come true. Israel and Jordan signed the Red Dead Agreement to make a 140-mile canal from the Red Sea to the Dead Sea. The billion-dollar project begins with a desalination plant to provide much-needed water and power to Jordan, then would drop the remainder of the water in the Dead Sea. Another way that in parallel could be done would be to take water from the Mediterranean and desalinate this water and give this water for drinking 
and for agriculture instead of taking the water from the Lake of Galilee and from the streams. But Adin said it's not easy to get governments invested in saving it. That's why activists like Jacob Benzakin and Noam Bedin are sounding the alarm. I want to see the Dead Sea restored. Ben Zakin from a nearby kibbutz gives the only boat ride available on the Dead Sea. The purpose is to bring awareness to the Dead Sea, to the beauty, to everything that's going on, including the disappearing of the Dead Sea and the, the way to save it. And it's working. Over a year ago, photojournalist Bedin took the boat tour. And that touched me as an Israeli uh, to speak up for this enchanted, prehistorical, biblical place, to stand up for it. These salty pillars or chimneys may be stunning, but their appearance signals trouble. Bedin's photos show the drop in the water level in just one year. I've been documenting this uh, one-of-a-kind place like, ne like never before, going on this boat right over a period of time and documenting the beauty, the magic of this place with the purpose to educate the next generation of this uh, one-of-a-kind place but also showing the dramatic changes that this place has been taking. The drop has also caused huge sinkholes to open up along the shore, forcing beaches to close and a nearby road to collapse. The Dead Sea is a favorite tourist destination. It's so salty you can't sink, only float. But there's much more. In the Bible, a young David hid in the nearby caves of En Gedi. The Dead Sea scrolls were found in the Qumran caves giving us the oldest manuscripts of the Bible. And the Dead Sea is actually giving life. The waters and air at the Dead Sea have special healing properties for skin and other ailments. And mineral mining yields potash, a key element for fertilizer used in agriculture to feed the world. According to Adin, the Dead Sea is like a very special diamond that needs to be preserved. Julie Stahl, CBN News, The Dead Sea. Up next, the Western world gets a cleaning ahead of the feast of Passover. Thank you for watching Jerusalem Dayline. We're committed to providing you with unbiased reporting from the Holy Land. Through weekly broadcasts, podcasts, and online media, our vision is to reach millions around the globe with the true story of what's happening in Israel and the Middle East all from a biblical and prophetic perspective. This is a big vision and is only made possible by the generous support of people like you. Call us toll free at 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash Jerusalem Dateline and make a donation that will help spread the light of truth about Israel throughout the world. Roman soldiers destroy the second temple of Jerusalem. Centuries of eyewitnesses say the temple treasures survived. But where are they? They went from Jerusalem to Rome, Rome to Carthage, Carthage to Byzantium. Historians are silent about what happened to it next. CBN Documentaries presents the worldwide release of Treasures of the Second Temple. So does it still exist today? A story of mystery. Where is it? Calamity. Most of the victims were butchered. And destiny. The possibility to dig is impossible. Get your copy of Treasures of the Second Temple. Yours for a gift of any amount to CBN Documentaries. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm gonna teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Here, we're committed to a heritage of rigorous scholarship dating back over a thousand years. And to a faith tradition dating back a thousand more. This is how we create a culture of inquiry where no topic is off limits. And a culture of hope. Anything's possible! It's Christian leadership. And it's changing the world for the better. It's higher learning. It's greater knowing. 
It's what makes us whole. It's what makes us Regent. Israel has been opening up again after its third COVID-19 lockdown. Sadly, Holocaust survivors have been some of the hardest hit during these closures. Take a look at how CBN Israel is helping out. Lisa is a Holocaust survivor who lives in Israel. The stress of the COVID-19 lockdowns and forced isolation have caused her painful memories of life in a Ukrainian ghetto to resurface. I was seven when we were forced by the Nazi into the ghetto. Food was very hard to come by. And you'd wake up not knowing if you'd have anything at all to eat that day. Then each evening we see carts going down the road filled with the bodies of those who starved to death. The constant hunger she experienced those years in the ghetto left a lasting psychological burden she carries to this day. That feeling of hunger is just stuck deep down inside me. It's a trauma shared between us Holocaust survivors, and the separation and fear caused by this virus has made it worse. Because of her age and the risk of catching the coronavirus, Lisa isn't able to go grocery shopping like she normally would. So CBN Israel brings her food and checks up on her while taking extra precautions to keep her safe. I think it's amazing that you would want to do this for me. Thanks to CBN Israel donors, Lisa and other Holocaust survivors across the country have the comfort of knowing they'll have food to eat and someone to look after them through this crisis. I am so very thankful for you and your support. It means everything to know that you remember us. May God bless you and protect you. When people come to pray at the Western Wall here in Jerusalem, many write out their prayers and put them in the wall itself. But due to travel restrictions and the COVID-19 lockdowns, most of those prayers were sent virtually and put in the wall by the Western Wall Heritage Foundation. Ahead of the Passover holiday, workers remove those prayers. The notes, which are considered holy because they are prayers to God, are then buried on the nearby Mount of Olives. We're doing that twice a year before the holidays in order to prepare the Western Wall to the visitors that are supposed to come during the holiday. We can say that this year there was an increase of notes sent by the Western Wall website, over 7,000 uh, 70, notes that were sent from countries all over the world. We expect, hopefully, that next year people could come and put the notes here by themselves at the Western Wall. Well, that's all for this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can also access CBN content through our CBN News and other CBN apps. And don't forget to sign up for our email blast so you can continue to receive all of our exciting CBN content. I'm Chris Mitchell. We'll see you next time on Jerusalem Dateline.